What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing to you a little bit of Seagrass Farms action. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So last Sunday I showed you part one of a two-part series on Albert Greenberg's home and what he later donated as a park to the county of Hillsborough. If you haven't seen that video yet, click links around and check that video out. Before that I showed you the Aquaculture Lab at the University of Florida four-part series on that. Click links around and check that out. This was all made possible by our friends at Seagrass. Now I'm going to show you some of the fat fish seagrass to have going on uh today's video i talked with miss sandy moore she's at all the events ae local clubs you name it she's Susie on the spot when it comes to being involved in the aquarium hobby and uh, she was kind enough to give me some time out of a busy day and show me her favorite the rio negro ro room at seagrass these people are doing about a million fish a week this is just one small part of their operation and sandy's kind enough to give me some time and show me some really awesome fish enjoy the video and if you like this video, hit the like or subscribe button. I can feel your love for it. Enjoy. What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's Fish Tanks bringing it to you from Seagrass Farms. And I had to get Sandy Moore on camera, the woman who made this happen. Say hello. Hello, Dustin. Hello, I want you guys everybody. to know how quickly this happened. This was a quick exchange at the Aquatic Experience. Hey, I need to come down and see what's going on at Seagrass. Sandy had Shelby put on me like piranhas on meat. <laughs> Two seconds, I was down here, like this happened very quickly. The precision that Seagrass is running it, uh, having me down, thrilled, or sorry to get down here sooner. That's okay. Loving it. We are here, and I said, where do you want to do a video? And you said, I want to do a video in the Project Piava hallway. Right. Why are we here? Go right. high level with us. Why are we standing in here? So five years ago, I went on expedition on the Rio Negro with Project Piava, and I came back to the U.S. wondering how the industry really could support the, the fishery of the Rio Negro here. Um, the biggest challenge we have in the U.S. on getting fish from the Rio Negro is we have a huge fluctuation in pH. We have really high pH hard water in the, U in the U.S. Uh, most people, like 85% of the U.S. has a pH in excess of 7.8. And where? what was the pH you just told me a minute ago? The pH that we tested in the Rio Negro varied from at the lowest 3.5, which was unbelievable. There was no no insect activity up to about 5.0, and then up to Manaus it gets to about 6.0. Really? So it's all below 7 around right. Manaus and right. Brazil. So we're in here, and it's hard to get those fish in. The fish have a brutal journey. and. Yeah. And, and what do you do? Well, sure. You gotta, you gotta tell the story fight. about the, 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 why the problem is and then what you guys are doing here at Seagrass to get back to that though. Right, so from point of collection to And I'm gonna rotate export, and do a little of this while good. we... From point of collection to point of export can be as short as two weeks, but as long as, as, long as 60 days. And then they're held at a consolidator in, in Manaus and then shipped all over the world from there. Even from Manaus, which doesn't seem like it's very far from the U.S., the flights from there are not spectacular. So they've got to do a layover in San Paulo until we can get a direct flight back from Miami. How big is Manaus? Manaus is not really that big of a city. I don't know if it's, it it's more than a million people. Does it, is, this not, is, it, is Manaus navigable by land? You can't get to it without boat or That's plane, right? right? That's all right, because Iquitos is the same way where I've been, but I've never been to Manaus. Yeah. So, so it's very hard to get these fish back, and you, you said that's just a huge pain, and fish don't like to be sitting, and you said that they sit in, in Sao Paulo for 30 hours or right. something, right? Yeah, so. they, sit, they sit there for a long time in the heat, which we try to avoid at all costs because heat kills fish. It just does more damage than, than they need to experience. So once we get the flights, once we can get a, a you know, the preferable is to have a direct flight from Miami to, or excuse me, from Manaus to Miami, um, we get the fish, we clear Fish and Wildlife and Customs, truck them back up here, it's four hours, and then we're doing this slow acclimation with them. And these systems are RO blend systems, so we're mixing um, mixing our softened, already softened water with, with half RO water, getting the pH down to 7.2, um, and are holding these fish for about two weeks while we feed them and, and medicate them and clean them up to get them ready to survive the rest of the uh, supply chain. Wow. And then what are you doing to help the fish farmers down there in Project Paiva? On um, Project Piaba, we... Project Piaba, yeah. Right. We're sending a dollar a box goes back to the actual fishing communities to, uh, to show our support for them. They and don't just show up in the pet store. Right. Like, <laughs> 
People need to understand that. That's so cool. So the education system down there is is cool. The uh, they have instead of school buses, they have school boats. Ah. That take them, that take the villagers to the to the schools. That's so awesome. Yeah, Project Piaba is a is a trip I really want to take. I love those elephant nose knives. Oh, they're amazing, Easy. and they like the camera, which is uh, always good. Where are these from? Any idea? I don't know. And I'm here, and like tonight you guys are getting in a big shipment from Czech Republic, so I'm probably going to have to get up early. It's 24 hours a day here, so I could, you know, I don't think I want to be that guy in the way when it's coming in, but how, <laughs> what does that, like, what does that look like? Like, what is that, like, how, how many boxes? Like, give me, give me, like, the scope a of, like, shipment? a Czech shipment's yeah. coming in. So a big shipment for us would be, like, a hundred box shipment from Singapore, where there's six bags to a box. Okay. Six full bags of fish to a box. So right. Like, uh... It's almost like a thousand platies. Okay. A thousand medium platies. A check shipment has got similar size boxes, but less quantity per bag. So it's actually 13 bags per box of some really, really interesting fish. So we got, you, I heard there was a pistos coming. A pistos and kiwis. And I would think some Tanganyikan cichlids and usually some interesting and rarer tank raised tetras. Possibly are the Czechs just good at breeding weird stuff? Or, I mean, because obviously those they're fish aren't super, from there. They're super at it. Yeah, they've got they've got really great water, and they have this great network of home hobbyists. Oh, do they? And so there's consolidators, consolidators that go pick up from all over the country people that are very specialized in what they breed and and are selling in small lots. So let Sandy talk while I show my gold nugget plecos here. He's all about the gold. Oh nugget. man, it's the second time I've. I mean, they're just awesome. You gotta touch them. Uh, you gotta. You can, well, cause you gotta see these fish like up out of the. Look at this. I love that she gets in after it. So you got it. I got one here. Look at that. Oh. Oh, those are so wicked. Beautiful little fish. Love that gold on them. That's an awesome shot right there. <laughs> and I got mine too, just, ah. His is wiggly. Look at that. They're so sweet. Wow. Yeah, so and where are those coming out tanks, of though? Um, these are coming out of Belém. These are still wild collected out of, out of Belém. Um, you see in there, we've got some places for the fish to hide, fish that are nocturnal like sure. um, Laura Caraday's. We want them because we're working all the time. The lights are always on. Right, we need ah. to give them a place to settle down and be comfortable. Gotcha. Um, you see also oh, buffalo heads. some plants. Yes. I didn't notice these. I love these. See plants. So if there's some aggression, they can get away from the aggressor. We also use um, cut up garbage bags for this for the same reason. I saw those you floating and I wondered what the heck it was. Right, I was so like, what is that? Bags. So it kind of spins in the water. It gives them a place to get away and then can be sterilized after after each use. Look at these pencil fish are awesome. We do love nanoscopies here. Yeah, yeah, these are sweet. And wow. And warus and what else is in here? Oh, they, uh, I got the warus down here. These are so sweet. Oh, those pearl stingrays. Let's Where are those? Oh, here, here we go. This is a fish I'm not gonna stick my hand in. <laughs> Me either. These are sweet. You do a lot of stingrays? We do a, we do a fair number of stingrays. We try to stick with the ones that are appropriate for, for home aquarists. Because these um, aren't going to get too big, right? The ones are gurus that come from Jarafwa in uh, in the Rio Negro. It's a little Hystrix, Hystrix type stingray. And as I understand it, it stays the smallest of all the freshwater rays. If you find another pick over here, i got to show these okay. quarry cats that I just saw. A little bit ago. Here we go. These quarries are sweet. I'm a quarry cat. I didn't see the Aeneas. This is my second time in this room, by the way. But uh, we have other stuff. These are. Oh, I. I, I got these. So we are scissors over here. What we got here? We have um, super empties there. Oh yeah. Oh wow. These are awesome. Super. Well named. <laughs> They're living to the name. 
Now, do these come in from like a like a five pH and stuff like that? I mean, yes. how ridiculous! Yes. Like so. All right, so let, let, I mean, let's just talk biz here. So yeah. that sounds like that's that's hard business because they come in at a five pH. Those right. of you who know the scale, like a pH of five is ten times softer than a pH of six. Right. So that's a hard that's exactly. a hard transition. Exactly. So. And that's why we're spending two weeks acclimating them because it's a huge change for them. Because when they go from here at seven two from a seven two pH, generally they're going to go into a pH of seven eight. Okay. Does that, I mean... And if we don't do this, then all these fish are just not available to consumers in the U.S. And these fish can live long term with the adjusted pH? Yes. yes. Wow. I'm they impressed. They would prefer yeah. to not. They would prefer to be in the softer water. Right. Wow. These are great. You know it's a good fish when your hand is just drawn. Like, I gotta, like, I gotta show these. But uh, very cool. What was it? What else was I looking? You had something else. Oh, Harold yeah, Schultz. I want to show this. This these uh, these are cool. And then my one of my favorites are the uh, the Sturbays, which are door number wow. two. But I want to get these guys here. Look at that. Where are these coming out of? Those are cool. Huh? That's a really. And then the Sturbays. Wild. Are these wild caught Sturbays then? Huh? Um. These. These, I was gonna say, like I know those are yeah, being bred. Tank rays either in Singapore or Indonesia. Oh, these are so cool. These are awesome. This is one of my favorite. You click the links around here, check out some of my old school stir bay videos. And these, this, this is not doing this justice as a juvenile because these fish have no. way brighter oranges. And I'm gonna steal the show here. Um, of these, yeah, because like these fish have this bright orange on the bottom. That you're not seeing so the stir base will be a really beautiful orange and like this fat body right. that's cool those are tank raised yeah we look at that tank raised in the water that doesn't help the coloration either nah. so we use catapa leaves okay to help also soften the water so it kind of makes it a little bit more brown but it the fish it makes them so much more comfortable can you say what you were saying about one of these that is the, the flower horn or something that we're having problems something that's already evacuated at the so yeah, yesterday I was laughing about the about the name because I think the name is cute, magma flower horn. Um, but then there is a uh, volcano about to erupt in Bali right now, so the the uh, airport in uh, distance are is that the name of it has already shut down in preparation for what could be what could be awful. The last time the uh, the volcano blew up, it killed like 1,300 people. Oh. And what country is this in? Bali, Indonesia. Wow. So, yeah, not the greatest name right. at this time. Right. So what else? Very, oh, this is so much the fun. The primary fish uh, yeah. of the Rio Negro fishery is Cardinal Tetra. Um, so the number one selling fish in the U.S. is Neon Tetras. Right. Close cousin to Cardinal Tetras. Cardinal Tetras are the number one selling fish in, in the EU. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Cardinal touches are? Yes. Why? Because I've always taken neons over cardinals because my pH is higher. Right. EU but, I has mean, lower, yeah. Has, the EU has lower pH. Oh, okay. So these fish well, that explains are it. Adaptable. And this and this does not do cardinals justice at all because they're just phenomenal schoolers. But these are wild caught. Yes, they are. Wow. And you were saying that for a while there they weren't available or that went dropped off. What was yeah, the numbers? The, uh, the government in Brazil, Ibama, restricted collection of cardinals to uh, to protect them for I believe six months out of the year. So the industry doesn't have access to these fish, and really nobody can stockpile six months no. of, of, of cardinal tetras. So the industry actually started raising these. Because yeah, I see them on lists. Right. And we started raising these. So you know there was the dilemma: go down to go down to Brazil and figure out how you're gonna how you're gonna protect the fishery while you're directly competing with the fishery. And as it turns out, if you promote one, you sell more of both. So if you promote, we're doing these tank rays, you'll sell more wild absolutely, as well. Absolutely. Okay. There's very. But that seems like good business to have both, right? If it, you're doing them your right. own and you can get them right. wild, then you're right. diversified or whatever. Right. Oh, here we got in here. Blacko time. There's definitely, you know, there's unique consumers for each of them. People of, of my generation have this, you know, 
Look at that catch. I can still believe that tank raised anything is better until you go down and you see how your purchases affect affect other people. And then, so for people that are younger than I am who want to who want to be part of the fall of the bean story, they will spend the time and effort to take care of what can be a more challenging fish if you know they have a direct positive impact on the. Ah. Well, sister, I could talk to you forever, and I've been right. running around with you. Thank you so much for having me down. And where can people find out more about you? You say you're open. You want to have people come down here we and do. see this. That's so sweet. Yeah, we have. Uh, we tour about 200 people a month. Uh, just contact tours at seagrassfarms.com. And Shelby, or one of our other staff members, will be happy to give you a tour. And check out all their stuff on Facebook. You guys yes. are all over all that yes. stuff too. Thank all right. you so much for Thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank God.